I found a really small penny stock company that I wanted to cover in a video. And I typically don't invest in really small companies, maybe here or there. I'm very selective. But I wanted to take a look at future fuel. And the reason for it is oil prices have gone up significantly. They've gone up from about $65 a barrel up to above $90 a barrel in three months. That's a big move, I believe, a 34% move. So that's going to make future fuel more valuable because they produce biofuel biodiesel to be specific. And that biodiesel is going to be more expensive. They're going to have a better price, but their manufacturing process is pretty consistent. So I think, you know, if oil prices stay high, future fuel has a really good uh, future ahead of it, at least the end of 2023 and probably into 2024. And I think this could be a quick win given uh, that, that oil prices are so high. My name is Victor. I have an MBA, a lot of business experience, and I cover videos where I cover companies, analyze them, take them through my process, and then share that analysis on YouTube. Do me a big favor and like my video and subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate that. Now, let me go get into my process and analyze future fuel. Now, before I buy a stock, I really put myself in the place of, am I, do I want to buy a part of this business? Do I want to be a part owner in this business? And do I want to be a part of the industry? And do I believe the employees that I have at that company are doing a really good job? Namely, is the management team performing well and is debt under control in less than three times EBITDA? And I want a discount on my stock so I can make money over time. And based on the answers to those questions, I buy, hold, or sell. So the story on Future Fuel, it actually starts with Eastman. Eastman used to make, you know, the film, Kodak film. And they had a chemicals division. And this is the asset that was sold off. The company that owns that facility now is Future Fuel. And they operate it for, for biodiesel production, as well as some other specialty chemicals. I understand the industry. I actually worked for an oil company as an accountant many years ago. And actually worked in the division that produced chemicals for some time. So I understand that, you know, a big part of the company is getting the facility together and having a marketplace to take your product to. I believe both things are in place. They have a facility and they have a marketplace that really wants um, their product when once they're done. I believe future fuel is being discounted by 83%. And I get to those numbers by discounting their free cash flows that I expect the company is going to produce. And I also discount the earnings per share that I believe the company is going to produce. And I believe that each share is really worth about $13.31, but the market will sell you uh, shares at $7.29. Free cash flows, I expect, I'm going to take 2022 numbers and take, just take 75%, which is a, a conservative number. As mentioned, oil prices are really on the rise. So I think they're going to do about $39 million of free cash flow this year. And then I'm going to grow those free cash flows by about 20%. Again, Oil prices really dictate this valuation, um, and it really will increase uh, the cash flows over the next four years. But beyond the first four years, I'm going to go conservative into the terminal value, uh, just grow it by 2%. But all future cash flows beyond year four are valued or amount to $630 million. I'm going to discount those by a very high weighted average cost of capital, even though this company has no debt. They have zero debt and they do have really good EBITDA and a lot of cash. I'm still going to go with a really high weighted average cost of capital since it is a very small penny stock. Based on that very high weighted average cost of capital, I discount those cash flows down to $495 million. They have $167 million of cash on the balance sheet. And it gives us an equity value of $662 million. Their current market cap is only $386 million dollars. So it offers, based on the free cash flows this company is going to produce, it's discounted significantly, has 107% upside based on the calculations that I have on free cash flow. Earnings per share, I'm going to go with a $1 of earnings per share for the year. Again, things are really picking up for the energy sector, specifically oil, and that has an effect on future fuel. And I'm going to have a nice, simple PE of 12. This will be a growing company. Growth rate of 2% to be conservative. And I get a stock price value of $9.69. 
but the stock market's selling for 729. So you have upside of 33% on the stock if you look at earnings per share. I combine the two and I take, you know, uh, two thirds or 0.66% uh, of this number and one third or 0.33% and blend those two to get to an 83% upside on this stock. The company is profitable. The company is growing. The company has a good balance sheet and generates free cash flow. The only thing that is, is a concern, a significant one, it's a penny stock. It's really small. So those tend to be just more, more things to worry about when it's a small company. The company is interesting. I think that, you know, biofuels is a good segment to be in, especially in a market with very high oil prices. So I'm very comfortable with energy companies. I'm an investor in Chevron. I'm an investor in a couple of different energy companies. This company is operating very well. Balance sheet's very good. They actually have zero debt. So well below three times EBITDA, really big discount. So I'm a buyer of future fuel. Looking at where the stock's traded on a two occasions over the last five years, it's traded above the valuation that I have, which is 13.31. Uh, and But more recently, especially this year, it's down 15.6% year to date. It does pay a nice dividend of 3.29%, but the, the price is down. Now, I'm looking at energy companies. Uh, my second biggest position in my portfolio, Chevron. And I own a couple of other small energy companies. And this one's really caught my eye. And I'm going to probably start a small investment in this particular company and really be careful as I buy shares. I think this could be a real winner. It could go up and double very fast. But it could also, since it's a small company, uh, I could get surprised and I could lose part of my investment. So I'm going to be careful, but it does offer a big discount. So I am very interested in future fuel. Future Fuel is a high risk investment just because it's a it's a penny stock. It's a very small company. Now it could be a multi bagger very quickly because it's such a low stock price, such a low market cap that if it does well and it increases its revenues, the market's just going to really uh, increase the the valuation of the company fast. It doesn't have any analysts covering it. That's another advantage to the individual investor is when you don't have analysts. And as soon as analysts, you know, uh, catch wind of this, you know, company that's that's profitable, growing, generating free cash, they may really start, you know, rating this company and recommending it to their clients. So um, ahead of that curve, I think it's a, a pretty neat idea. I'm going to look to buy a small position in the company and we'll see how it goes. Do me a favor, like my video and subscribe to my channel. Good luck investing in 2023.